So at Conservation, we are very scientific. I have many things that are always up for being improved, but on my bucket list from the day I walked in the door was modernizing and innovating our data. Um, because we are scientific, we generate an enormous amount of data and our data is used and shared not only by the state of California, but also by other entities. We, we partner with other scientific entities. We partner with colleges and USGS and we give data to the public. We use our data for everybody. But because we are such a scientific organization, each division within our organization does very specific types of science. So they tend to be very siloed. They love their data. That can make it a little disparate. So what I'm really hoping for is to do an actual modernization where we bring it all together to where we are sharing it, we're storing it, we have data governance, we're making it more available for collaboration and therefore we can do so much more with it. But that's choosing to be a huge hurdle, um, especially when there are so many different personalities with very strong feelings about the data. So it's a big effort. One I've been trying to get off the door since I off the ground since I came in the door. Um, not quite there yet, but getting closer, taking baby steps. So that one would be huge. So I have all the nerds. All the nerds love to do fun things. Um, our science touches basically everything tied to anything that's relevant to the residents of California. One of the very fun things, or I think is fun things, but is very critical to what we do, we have an entire unmanned aircraft program. We have a whole fleet of drones and we have a whole fleet of certified drone pilots. So why does that matter for what we do? because they can use these things to get information and go places that humans can't or that humans would take too long. Examples of those, we have drones that sole purpose is to detect methane, right? We live in California. Everything that we hear is about carbon sequestration and how important it is you know, that we, that we stop some of the bad things happening in our environment. The methane detecting drones help us do that. We can find that information, we can use it in our science and we can help with some of these future efforts that are going to make things better around here. That's not all we use them for though. Say there's been a, a large natural disaster that's happened, a big fire or an earthquake or who knows what happens to us here in California. We can use our pilots, can take these drones into these locations like right after these things happen, before it's even safe for a human to go in there and they can get just vast amounts of data in very short periods of time that can be used and shared with Cal OES and Cal Fire and who knows who else that may be part of those emergency response systems. And they can use this to trend things, to be forward thinking, to try and identify, you know, where might there be a mudslide that could impact somebody someday? You know, where, where might we need to do other mitigation efforts? They can use the data that they pull in from the drone to find all of these things and come up with plans to help California, right? But none of that really matters if people can't get to the data. So some of the other things that we do is for the actual residents of California, right? Not the computer nerds, not the scientists, not the people that speak, you know, data, but normal humans like the rest of us. Um, we employ quite a few dashboards, and I know there's some people that groan at dashboards, but for us, we find that it's a way that makes it easy for normal people to go out, find the information that we build, that we put together, the plans and things that we can, that we can make. They can go get it, they can filter through it, they can find what's important to them, and they can do it easily. So we do a lot of dashboarding. Those are just a couple of the many things that we do that are innovative at DOC, and it's all tied to technology that we use. So we take accessibility seriously. Um, one of the things that we did early on was DOC partnered with the Department of Rehab, right? What better way to really understand 
what needs to be done to make information accessible to everybody, no matter what disability they may have or what ability they may have. So we partnered with them early on to find out what tools do they use? What strategies do they use? Are there tips and techniques? Are there best practices? We learned all of those things ahead of time and we have brought those into DOC. So now what we do as part of our everyday practice, every employee that starts with DOC gets a level of accessibility training. Right? Not everybody knows what is it? Why does it matter? Who does it impact? So we teach those things to everybody that comes in. We also have the ability to give specific people that are going to be in roles that need to create documentation or artifacts of any kind. We can give them training to help them understand these are the tools that will best enable you. These are the tools, these are the techniques, these are the, the checklists to help you make sure you've done all this stuff so that you are building information from the beginning that is accessible to anybody. We also have a team of website specific managers whose job it is to make sure that before we put something publicly available on our website, we try to make it as accessible as possible. Um, we have various tools within our website that will address accessibility issues as well. So, but that's all from a technology standpoint. Um, it is, the whole reason behind it is people, right? So for us, we also try not to forget the people aspect of it. We have a committee in-house called the Disability Advisory Committee. That committee is voluntary for any DOC staff member at any level of the organization from the top to the most entry level at the bottom, anybody can join it. And what that committee is all about is educating. We educate others, they educate themselves, we educate others, we work on making sure that information is available about anything related to disability and accessibility, right? We inform people about events that are going on. We bring in speakers. They do all of these things so that we don't forget the human aspect, right? Because it doesn't matter if you forget the people because they're the ones that it's for. AI is a must. Um, it is coming hard and fast, whether we're ready for it or not. So I'm really hoping to get some good information from my industry peers, to see some of the things that other departments are doing, to maybe learn some more gotchas that are out there, things that I hopefully won't step in along the way if somebody can, can warn me about them first. Again, I mentioned very scientific organization. My guys are dying to bring AI in for everything that they can do, right? Nerds love new toys. This is a new technology that they can't wait to use. But from a an CIO perspective, I have to be concerned about security. I have to be concerned about the well-being of the people's information that we're going to be potentially ingesting or the information that we're going to be creating. Right? There's things around it that really need to be better understood before we just bam, drop it in our door. Right? It needs some governance. We need some clear guidelines of here's the things that it will be amazing to help us do. Here's the things that maybe we shouldn't venture into. And here's the way that we're gonna keep all of this secure and make sure that the output that we're giving people is accurate, effective, efficient, that it's the right information, right? And that we haven't broken any rules that we shouldn't break that maybe we don't even know are out there. So there's just so many unknowns about AI that I really wanna learn a lot more about it before we start implementing it as a heavy tool in our environment.